What's up guys? I'm at a spot here on Long Island. Long Islanders will know, but I just don't want to give it away. I'm going to attempt some frog fishing. I'm in my waders instead of uh, bare feet. So it seems like every single time I go barefoot, I get something wrong with my feet. I get cut up and it's pretty bad. All right, so let's talk about what I'm doing right now. Let's break down what's happening and how to fish a spot that I'm fishing. So what I have around me are tons of lilies all over the place. It's about three o'clock in the afternoon. One of the hotter times of year right here in New York. So I'm gonna start working frogs after I work this open area. See all that's lilies over there. I'm gonna work the frogs there, but I have this one open spot that I'm gonna to try to work with the spinnerbait. It's produced with the spinnerbait very often, so I'm in about, I'm knee deep right now. So I'm just slow rolling a spinnerbait with a Cast King Speed Demon 9.3 to one gear ratio bait casting reel. I got 15 pound braid and I'm using a 7.1 moderate to moderate fast action rod. All right, so with no luck with the spinnerbait, I'm just shifting gears over to over to fishing the frog. I'm just gonna work all the lilies I possibly can. Working it slow, giving it a few twitches, stopping it. I'm working the shoreline first, because that's where I'll be walking. So I'll be spooking those fish out if they're still there. And then moving towards the outside of the lilies and working it towards myself. There we go. We're into a fish. Ah, oh, come on. Right when it hit the water. He's in so many weeds. Ah, oh, come on. Come on. He's fighting. He's fighting. There we go. All that for a pound and a half fish. Look at that. That's awesome. Annihilated that $2 frog from Dick's. Cool. I love frog fishing. Cool. Man, hurt my chest. Mwah, smooch and release. Goodbye, beautiful fish. Thank you for that fight. So that fish came right out of the uh, edge of the lilies, right when it hit the water. So maybe they're just sitting on the edge of the lilies. So pretty much all over America, we're getting into summer, and that means frog fishing. I love frog fishing because one, you get a lot of big fish, two, it's really fun. So let's break down a little bit about frog fishing. What I like to do when frog fishing is work slow, give it a one, two, three, four, five twitch, let it sit, one twitch, which is like a reaction bite, I call it. Um, a reaction strike or a reaction twitch. If there's a fish following your frog or top water, you're gonna do the one, two, three, four, five, one. The fish will bite on that one. A lot of times you'll see breaks in lily pads, like a, a pocket of emptiness where there's no lilies. I like to work the frog all the way to the edge of that and then pause it on the edge of the lilies and then work it slowly through that opening all the way to the other edge of the lilies and then keep doing the five twitch, one reaction. I like to work the, the open pockets slower because the fish can see the bait a whole lot easier and I want to keep that bait in the, re the um, reaction zone or strike zone as long as possible. Like I said in the beginning of this video, I'm using 15 pound braid. It's Cast King Super Power Braid. Um, a lot of people use 50 pound Power Pro or whatever, but you guys can see the lilies that I'm sitting in right now and 15 pound Super Power Braid works like a charm. One tip or trick I can tell you guys about frog fishing is watch your frog. You're gonna, you gotta learn your frog. You'll know the wake that it puts off when you twitch it. If you see an abnormal wake behind your frog, that means a fish is chasing it up. Slow it down or stop it and then give it that one reaction strike. If there is a fish there, it'll strike. 
So you gotta watch the weight that your frog produces because fish will just annihilate frogs, swim out as fast as possible. Like that, holy crap. See, I saw the weight come in, I stopped it, twitched it, man. Let's do this again, let's get another one. Whew, can't breathe. I don't know if you guys can feel or hear my heartbeat in the microphone. That was an insane strike. That's why we, that's why we fish frogs, you guys. That was an intense, intense strike. We're gonna work this area a little bit slower, a little bit harder. I'm not gonna move up for a while because I know there's a fish here. So I'm gonna work it slow. Try to get that bite one more time. That was a, that was crazy. One other thing I can tell you guys about frog fishing is you gotta pay attention to the lilies as well. Even a, not even your frog, just in like 10 feet away or whatever, if you see lilies moving randomly, not with the wind or, it's either a turtle or a fish swimming in between the lilies and moving them. So those are key areas that you wanna cast towards because there could be a potential hungry bass in that area. If it's a turtle, most likely won't go after your frog but if it's a bass, you cast over there, start twitching it, give it that one reaction twitch, you could get a fish. Okay, so now we're coming up to this edge over here. And over there, there's not really lilies, but there are pockets where the, where the reeds go like this. So what you wanna do over there is cast inside those holes, cause that's where the fish are gonna be chilling, waiting to ambush bait fish, frogs, dragonflies, whatever, on the points of those reeds. It sort of like hides the bass from the bait fish. If you see a splash, hear a splash, cast in that direction. Maybe the bass will want to go after your bait too. There's so many tips to bass fishing for, uh, frog fishing for bass, it's, it's, it's insane. See, like splashes are happening everywhere. All right, if you get stuck in reeds, give it a little tw uh, turn of the reel. You don't want anything too extravagant to spook away fish. Work the open spaces slowly because the bass can see the bait a whole lot better. Let's talk a little about frog color while we're out here. I got a straight black top with a white bottom with black skirt material right here as legs. I like that in super clear water or blue sky, which is pretty much what we have. Um, with the white bottom, I like to use it in this kind of more dingy water. It's not completely chocolate milk but it's not completely clear either. I like the white because it just, uh, it shows on the top water when the bass are looking up. Plus it contrasts the blue sky. If it was cloudy out, I'd be using more of like a, a green or a yellow because that goes against the white sky. But if you can always stick with a black frog or, or if you want, you can use a yellow belly frog. Those are my two favorite colors when fishing frogs. White bellies too. There we go. There we go. Awesome, awesome. I don't know if you guys saw where I, where I casted that. Okay, let's talk about what just happened. There's, wow, that's a decent fish, man. Let's get into the sun so you can see it. It's a decent fish. It's a solid two, I'll tell you that much. Cool. Mwah, smooch and release. Let's talk about what just happened there. Okay, so like I said before in this video, Aim for the pockets in between the reeds, and that's exactly what happened. I cast it right in between a pocket. Once that hit the water, the bass attacked it. Aim for those pockets, work the pockets slow. Those are key areas that the bass are gonna be that you want your bait to stay in as long as possible. Get deep inside those pockets, as deep as you can, which is why I like my Speed Demon, because it doesn't backlash. If it hits anything, it's pretty awesome that way. So now that I know that's proven, I'm gonna target deep, deep, deep into these, these reeds now as much as possible. All right, with little pressure, my drag set pretty tight, but not too tight to where I'm gonna rip out the frog's mouth, the frog out of the bass's mouth. 
See that? I cast it right in the reeds. Spooked a fish. Maybe it'll come after my frog, I don't know. But they're sitting right in that reeds at this time of day. It's baking hot out. Let's get a little bit deeper in there. Open water frogs are some of the toughest to set. There we go. Right on the edge of lilies. Oh, it's a good one. There we go. That's a beautiful, beautiful bass. Look at all those fins, big and big and open. Wow. See, they want it. Right at the top of their mouth. That was fished right over some, the edge of lilies and worked over the, the edge. Oh man, look at that fish. That is just a beautiful, beautiful bass. Pound and three quarter, smooch and release. Beautiful, beautiful bass. I didn't even know I had that frog because I was looking at a fish over here. You guys ever go to the pet store, pet store and see the, like, they have a shark, a fish called a shark? I saw a fish in here that looked like that and I didn't know they were in here, but he was chasing off a bunch of sunnies. So I was looking at that and then all of a sudden my rod went down. I'm like, whoa. So that, that fish set the hook on himself, which is why I love these medium, uh, moderate fast action rods because they have enough bend in them to where the fish sets the hook. Uh, it's just awesome. That fish was on the end of those lilies, right where they come to a point, and I cast it past that point, worked it all the way to the edge of it, stopped it, looked at the fish, and that's when he hit. It's good spots, guys. Edges of lilies. I think I'm into a fish. Ah, I couldn't even see, but yeah, I'm into a fish. Holy cow. I cast it somewhere I couldn't see, in the reeds. I'm into another fish. It's one way to do it. Right on the edge of the shore that time. Mwah. Another one of those random casts that I didn't see hit, but felt. There we go. Nope. See guys, in those reeds. Deep in those reeds. There we go. Right in the deep of those weeds. He hit it one time, threw it back in there, got him again. Sweet, guys. Choking that frog. Gotta get deep in those reeds. Cool. Let's see if there's another one in there. There we go. We just circumnavigated the entire pond using a frog, hitting target areas like the pockets of reeds, edges of lilies, doing the five twitch, one, one reaction twitch method, moderate to moderate fast action bait casting rod with a 9.3 to one gear ratio bait casting reel, which is fantastic for ripping them out of the reeds and the lilies in a quick pace. We're using 15 pound braid, but I do recommend throwing at least 20, 25 pound. 15 is what I have on here, it works. But just to be safe, throw 25, 20, 25, 30, 50, whatever you feel more confident in. We learned black frogs are great, white belly frogs for blue skies, black and yellow for, for the cloudy skies. Pretty sure that's what sums this up. Uh, I did not mention the knot I use. I use a polymer knot when I'm throwing these, these frogs. 
Along with that, everything that I mentioned inside of this video, the frog, the rod, the reel, the line, everything will be in the description below. The um, links where you can buy these products are in the description below as well. Be sure to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, tell me your favorite fish that I caught today in the comments below. Or, tell me what your favorite color frog is in the comments below. All right guys, thanks for watching. Stay real, smooch and release. Go have fun in the water.